If you click into this video, I'm assuming you are looking for the best way to cook your eggs. And here I am after cooking more than 50 eggs. I'm here to tell you all about how to cook the perfect pan fried, boiled and scrambled eggs. This is the ultimate guide to cooking eggs. Let's get cracking. The first thing we need to talk about is how to properly crack an egg. I crack my egg in a certain way and maybe yours is different. Of course, there is no right or wrong way as long as the egg is cracked in the end. But there is a preferred way that I would like to recommend. Cracking your egg on the lip of a bowl or a pan works most of the time. However, it does have some downsides. It pushes the eggshell back into the egg, so it's easier for small pieces of shell to get into your egg. I like to crack the egg on a flat surface. This method is less likely to break your yolk as well. This happens to me every now and then. If your eggshell falls into your eggs, try not to pick it out with the eggshell. Doing that may risk introducing bacteria from the outside of the shell into your egg mixture, which can cause issues when you are making eggs that are not fully cooked, like a soft scramble. A better way is to dip your fingers in water and pick them out from the bowl. One last tip is to always use room temperature eggs when you cook. I know, I know, it's a little annoying, but if you use eggs straight from the fridge, you will be more likely to overcook your whites while the yolk still hasn't set. So make sure you take your eggs out from the fridge at least one hour before you cook. As my mom says, patience always provides better outcomes. Now we get to cook the eggs. To start, you will need a good nonstick pan because we want our eggs to be easy to flip. No one wants an egg stuck to the pan. That's just frustrating. And I'm speaking from experience. Heat your pan over medium heat and add some oil. Any oil will do and a little oil goes a long way if you're using a good nonstick pan. Heat up your oil to medium heat and this should take about one minute. The best way to smoothly get your egg into the pan is to first crack the egg into a small bowl. But I'm gonna be realistic here. That means one more bowl to wash and we're not about that. So just carefully crack your egg into the pan. That's totally fine. Just make sure to stay close to the pan so you don't break the egg yolk. Now, from this point on, it's just a matter of when you remove the egg from the pan. For a sunny side up, cook for about 2 minutes or until the white is fully set and the yolk is still runny. Sprinkle some salt and pepper and there you have the perfect sunny side up egg to pair with your breakfast. An over easy egg, flip the egg after 2 minutes and cook for about 30 seconds until the other side is just set and you are able to scoop it up. Cook it for 30 seconds longer and you have an over medium egg. An over medium egg is always my go-to. I love the jelly-like texture mixed with a runny yolk. Yum yum yum. For an over hard egg, cook both sides for 3 minutes each until the yolk is fully cooked. If you are not a fan of a gooey yolk texture, like my colleague Diego, this one's for you. When frying an egg, there is another technique called basting. It's similar to how you would cook an over easy egg, but instead of flipping it, when one side is ready, you add a splash of water and cover the pan so the steam can cook the top side of the egg. When you see the top of the egg develop a white film, that's when you know it's done. This way, you don't risk breaking the yolk when you flip the egg, but you still get a slightly cooked top. And there you have it, your go-to breakfast pan-fried eggs, done perfectly every time. Yes, I know a lot of people are intimidated by boiling eggs because you cannot see what's happening inside the shell. Although that is true, there is a golden rule to follow to make sure you have a perfectly boiled egg to your liking every time. And trust me, it's foolproof. There are two popular methods of boiling eggs, the cold water method and the hot water method. 
We find the hot water method saves more time and leaves less room for error. To start, have a pot of boiling water ready and make sure your eggs are at room temperature otherwise they will crack when they hit the boiling water. I mean, it's still okay, but it's just gonna be less pretty. Using a ladle, carefully lower the eggs into the pot. A lot of people categorize the doneness of boiled eggs by exactly how many minutes they are cooked. But for normal home cooking, we don't need to be that precise. To make it easier for you to follow, we categorize the doneness of the egg into three states. Soft boiled, medium boiled, and hard boiled. A soft boiled egg takes about six minutes to cook and you get a tender white and a runny yolk. A medium boiled egg takes seven to eight minutes and has a slightly more set yolk with a runny center. And this one is my favorite. I cook it all the time. A hard boiled egg takes about 11 minutes and has a completely set yolk. Now, some people may ask, can you overcook your boiled eggs? And the answer is yes. An overcooked boiled egg has a dark rim around the yolk which creates an eggy and slightly bitter taste. That is not what we are going for. So make sure you don't cook your boiled eggs longer than 13 minutes. When time is up, transfer the egg to ice water immediately. Doing this not only helps the egg stop cooking, but it also makes the whites shrink and detach from the shell, making it so much easier to peel. How cool is that? Science, am I right? And voila, you have the formula to boil the eggs to your desired doneness every time. Put them on your avocado toast, as a protein boost on your salad, or just have it as it is. The possibilities are endless. After cooking more than 50 eggs, I have identified the best ratio to make a velvety, creamy scrambled egg. For every two eggs, use one tablespoon of cream and one tablespoon of butter. This creates the best scrambled eggs every time. By adding cream and butter, we are essentially adding extra water and fat into the egg, leaving less room for error. You can season the egg afterward, but I like to season while beating the eggs so the flavor is more incorporated. As a plus, the seasoning acts as a tenderizer to help bond the eggs as well. There are two main ways to cook a scrambled egg. The soft scramble, which is the most common one, and the French scramble. Now if you haven't tried the French one, your mind is about to be blown. To make soft scrambled eggs, heat a nonstick pan over medium heat. Melt the butter and pour in the beaten eggs. Let it sit for about 15 seconds and you will see the egg start to sit at the bottom. Run your spatula through the egg from the outside in and push the egg towards the center of the pan. And I think this is the most fun part of cooking scrambled eggs. How often you run your spatula decide how big your curd is. Don't run it too often or you will get a scramble that is too loose. And right before the egg is fully cooked, when you still can see some of the uncooked eggs, take them out and the residual heat will continue cooking the eggs. The French scramble uses the same ingredients, but the difference is that we use a medium to medium low heat, cooking it low and slow. You will know the temperature is right when you drop in your butter and you see small, almost foamy bubbles instead of big rapid bubbles. You will need to keep scrambling a lot longer than you would with a soft scramble. And it's like a workout. What we are looking for at the end is an almost mashed potato-like consistency. You may need to remove your pan from the heat now and then to make sure the heat inside the pan is consistent. It's going to take about 15 minutes and when you reach a creamy, velvety consistency, the scrambled eggs are done. I like my French scrambled eggs on toasted bread. I know it seems like a lot of time just for some scrambled eggs, but once you've tried it, you'll see how all that time scrambling really pays off. It truly has a velvety texture and a luxurious taste. 
I hope this video is helpful to you and be sure to let me know how those eggs turn out. See you in the next one. Don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment and head to SciShop.com to find more egg recipes.